What's up guys, it's Dave here from Stances Everything and we are going to be doing some more paint and body work and some patina work in this video. Um, this video is going to be broken up into a bunch of different parts because of some stuff that I have going on this week. Uh, I've got some training stuff that I have to do from 7 to 9 every night and usually I get out in the garage at 9 so I don't know if after I do my training and a bunch of other stuff how much time I'm going to have left. We're going to keep plugging away and luckily it is actually body work I need to do this week. So I'm going to set up some lights and show you what I'm working on and what I hope to accomplish in this video. The first thing we're going to be working on is right here on this back panel that goes up against the cab. I am going to prime all of the spots where I added body filler so I can see where I'm at and if I do need to add more filler. I did spend a lot of time sanding this down off camera to get it to this stage to just save you guys from a lot more of me uh, sanding. So all this bottom area where this filler is going to get some gray primer and then I'm probably going to get some red oxide primer and touch up all these bare metal spots where I didn't do any work where that's some of the um, natural dents and stuff that happened to this back panel over time. I want some of that to remain when I kind of patina this. Um, this is the back panel so really this isn't going to be seen so it's the perfect area for me to experiment on uh, some techniques to get my patina down pat. The next area we're going to work on is the opposite side of the panel that you just saw. I spent a lot of time sort of sanding in here because it's concave. It did take a long time and I did have to hand sand it. Uh, you can see I've got like a nasty filler gap in there. So I am definitely going to put some filler on there after I've painted the other side uh, so I can make the best use of my time while things are drying. Uh, I'm going to have to go over this with um, some wax and grease remover and a tack cloth to get it to the point where I can put some filler in. As if those two things were not enough fumes floating around in the garage. While the primer is drying on this side and the filler is drying on this side, I am going to turn my attention to the second coat of trem clad on this inner fender here. Now it is pretty cold uh, in the garage these days. Right now though this week there are a couple of days where there are plus temperatures so to figure out what days I can spray paint I'm actually going to use my garage thermometer. My garage thermometer will be this bottle of water here. If it's still water we're good to paint. If it is frozen that's a sanding day. That is what I have used for the past few years in the garage. Now if I was doing you know uh, really anything but a patina paint job I would not do that. When I did do some of my door jams and stuff like that and I wanted a good finish, I did actually wait until it was, you know, 10 degrees outside, which means it was okay in here to paint. Um, but for stuff like this that I'm doing, uh, it's totally okay to use that method. Um, I found it hasn't let me down too bad. And if I spray before I go to bed, by the time I get to it the next day, it's roughly, you know, 12 to 20 hours between the paint, which even with the coldest that it does get in here, uh, paint does tend to dry pretty well in those conditions. So um, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I am going to start first with cleaning up uh, the back panel of the bed and then getting to prime it. All right, so we've laid some paint and put some filler down, so I will show you where we're at before we move to putting some hot rod black inside of this fender. Um, so I put some filler down. Uh, I do have to go over it with another coat, so I'm not too worried about how it looks right now. You can still see there's a depression there, and that's really what I'm trying to get out. So I'm gonna go over all of this again with filler once it's dry and then knock it all down. Um, and then if we move to this side, I have hit this all with primer and it is drying. Now there's a lot of damage in this back panel and you can definitely see some of it uh, after I prime this. Once it's dry I'm going to block sand it again, get it a little bit better and then just go straight into patina work. I'm not too worried about uh, this looking damaged because as you can tell 
all of these high spots here there 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 those are all dense and that's kind of the way this is going to be i just didn't want this back panel completely rotted through so i have fixed that and again this is going to be the more important side because if you're looking from the back of my truck imagine that my workspace is not here this is all what you're going to see and then my chassis is going to be in the middle so i want this to look as nice as possible as presentable as possible while still maintaining a patina look so that is to say that i'm not going to spend too much on what you're going to see to the back of the cab i've probably honestly already spent more than enough time there. i know some of you are going to think hey dave that sounds like you're giving up near the end of the project i am totally not but i am really 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 pushing to get this truck on the road this year and i'm not going to let that detail keep me from getting the truck driving because again very very few people are going to see it and once i put it in patina it is going to look pretty slick and pretty natural like it was all damage that occurred um, while the truck was being driven the next thing that's up is i'm going to put my camera somewhere where you can watch me i have to uh clean this all out and then hit it with uh with some of the hot rod in a can or hot rod black whatever you want to call it trim clad rust-oleum that's what's going on here for the second coat before i hit it with undercoating All right, you guys, I just laid down a, another coat of trim clad on this inner fender. Uh, so you can see that it is pretty glossy. This is gloss black. So yeah, it's really glossy. This is freshly wet. I am probably gonna let this dry for about uh, a couple days at least. Uh, it might end up being about five days or so before I sort of finish what I'm doing here and move over to here. Uh, once I feel like it's good and dry, I am going to hit it with some premium rubberized undercoating, whatever that stuff is. Uh, the reason that I do the trem clad first is because the trem clad really sticks to the metal. Uh, any of It's really designed to go over rust and really get in there. And then the rust proofing goes over that. So if anything does get under the, uh, sorry, if anything does get under the undercoating, uh, it won't get under the trem clad. This trem clad sticks really, really well. Um, it's, just, it's just really shiny. And that rubberized undercoating will provide a little bit more durability and a little bit of sound deadening inside, the, uh, inside of the fenders. So that's why I like to use that. Um, while that is drying, we are going to go back and I'm going to put another coat of filler on here. I'm not going to film that because I've already filmed it uh, for today. And then I am going to also blast another coat of primer on here just to kind of even it out a little bit more. Once all of that is done, sorry. Once all of that is done, uh, we're going to come back probably tomorrow and I am going to then layer on the red oxide primer and then from there we get into the blues. So when I say we get into the blues, what I am going to try and match is the original patina of my truck. That darn compressor got me again. Okay, so when I say we're going to get into the blues, what I mean is we're going to try and match the original patina that my truck has. Now, as you know, my truck is not here. It is at IzzyFab, but thankfully I kept some of the metal I cut out of it. So this is, if it was like this, this is my cab corner basically uh, let me put this on the bench so you can see really what's going on okay so this is my cab corner this would be the center of the truck and this is the blue on the outside what they did this is some pinstriping that the pinstriping guy was messing around with what they did with my truck was it was originally or at some point it was this darker blue and then they went over it with this lighter blue that has a bunch of different shades and colors in it just from different coats going on over the years uh, different ways that it faded so what I do when I match the patina is I go with the sort of dark blue first light blue and then I kind of sand it and match it now because I want to represent a little bit of this rust in here that's where the red oxide is going to go and because I have a lot of other paint left over what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with with the darkest blues that I have and then I'm going to hit it with the blue that I know matches close to this then I'm going to layer on some light blues that don't match exactly 
and then I'm going to get the light blue that matches closely to this, and then we're going to sand it all down. Hopefully after I sand it all down, we get some of this texture similar to what is on this panel and what is here. So you can see that there's some blue coming out. I don't know where that blue came from. You've got some white, some reds. I want to sort of mimic this rough beat up look to again be a patina looking bed. So that's why I'm going to put so much paint on here that I can sand it down and experiment on this panel, which is essentially going to be hidden before we get to, you know, my bed sides, which are going to be really important, the tops of the bed uh, and these fenders. So there is going to be a lot of experimentation with painting. Um, and that is definitely what I want to show off in this video is how you can kind of mess around to create patina yourself and really um, match in panels and everything like that. Because once again, my truck did not come with a bed, so I have nowhere to start but right here in the garage figuring it out. And that's what we're going to do when we come back in the next uh, clip. All right, guys. So it's uh, day two on this patina endeavor, and um, everything has had a night to dry out. And if we check the thermometer, we are not frozen, which means we can keep rolling. So this has uh, dried now. Um, it's, it's dry to the touch. I'm not getting any paint on my finger there. Uh, it's pretty shiny. Don't worry, I'm going to knock that down before I hit it with the undercoating. But what's really important is that everything is coated now. And I can actually go back. I'm going to give it a little bit more time to dry before I do this. But I can go back and put some seam sealer on the areas that I welded. The extra bit of seam sealer will just make sure that everything is nice and uh, prepped from the backside so that I don't have to worry about any rust coming through. In the meantime, I am going to flip this over and I have a few spots uh, that I can go over with filler uh, still. Just um, like I said, I want to keep moving, keep doing as much as I can between things drying. Moving over to here, um, this is definitely not the best looking panel. You can see a lot of different dents and stuff. If I primed up here, you would see that too. And once I do prime it, you are going to see it. Again, we are going to patina match this. So these dents and stuff that you see from stuff sliding forward in the bed is uh, actually stuff that I do want to exist. And again, this is going to be up against the cab. So really, this is just going to be where I'm going to experiment. I'm particularly going to experiment on the top here to make it look like it's worn from stuff being carried in the bed. Um, so there are, however, uh, I have a couple of drips here and just a couple of areas that I want to smooth out. So I am going to wet sand this entire back panel with some 400 grit paper and then I bought some uh, red oxide that I am going to go over and hit some of these bare metal spots because I would really much rather that come through as red oxide than bare metal. Um, and then after that, it's going to be hitting it with a bunch of various blues to figure out exactly how we want to patina it, which is going to be a layering process. So there's going to be lots of video of me um, just spraying lots of paint. So I spent about 50 minutes or so hitting uh, this back panel here with some 400 grit and so with some water and just kind of wet sanding it down. So I got to thinking while I was sanding my approach. So all down there where it's gray primer right now is going to be red oxide and then a bunch of those raw spots are going to get hit with red oxide as well. I'm going to try and resist the urge to paint this all with red oxide primer just because I do want to, you know, if some of that white comes out it's going to look kind of neat. I just want to keep as many layers as possible so that I try and prevent actually burning down to bare metal when I am patinaing this. Um, but yeah, before I do that, let's, uh, let's do some, some sanding on the other side. So I'm going to clean up, move a few things around, hit this with a tack cloth, and then we are going to start putting some red oxide primer on here so I can come another day this week and start blowing in some blue colors and we can start trying to figure out how the patina is going to shake out.
Okay, so I've sprayed down their red oxide primer. You might have seen in the time lapse that I was struggling again. Uh, I have another primer with another nozzle that's kind of messed up. Uh, I was able to sort of tweak it a little bit, but at first it was kind of spraying more like a turbo can and just putting up way too much paint. But anyway, I'll show you what I've done. At the bottom now, it is in red oxide, and then I've kind of split, sprayed a bunch of the spots that were really, really down to bare metal. Um, because of the way the nozzle was spraying, it wasn't working out quite the way I wanted to. I think when I do this on other parts of the truck, I'm actually going to cut some cardboard and kind of spray through a hole to, to control the spray a little bit better. But I think this is going to be fine for where it's at, especially down here. You can't see any gray anymore. Uh, this Duplicolor stuff is a little bit better of a product than the Princess Auto stuff, so it should cover really well. I'll let this all dry. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up a little bit down here. You can see I got some overspray on some stuff. Not too concerned, but I also don't want blue everywhere, so I will clean up a little bit uh, before I start spraying down the blue. Jack stands I'm not going to worry about. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll get some blue paint on this. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just start knocking it down. So each night, basically, I'm going to come out, you know, after I clean up. Each night, I'm going to come out and just spray a little bit more blue. I'm going to start with uh, kind of not the dark, dark, darkest blue I have. A little bit lighter. Lay that down. Then I'm going to go down with the probably another blue that I have. Like I said, I got a bunch of these cans mixed. And not all of them are the right color. But I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I might as well spray them here. And then hit it up with that dark blue. And I'm probably going to do the whole back of the gate in the dark blue. And then around the edges is going to be the lighter blue. Mimicking where if you were trying to paint a bed on the truck where you would hit um, that is my goal here and then we'll start knocking things down and messing around and see if we can create some nice patina okay so we're back we have hit this with some red oxide primer uh, I am going to go check the thermometer quick looks like we're solid I have some dark blue out here um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit uh, everything with a little bit of this scotch bright uh, super fine just to knock it down a little bit maybe get a couple of the dust nibs off not gonna go too crazy uh, I just want to get this nice and uniform and then I'm gonna go hit it with blue so I'm gonna hit um, I'm gonna concentrate my work primarily in this video to this panel here so I'm not gonna do the outsides which I've done some sanding on but I'm just gonna concentrate on the center and then wrap around a little bit to the top here as well and then we can kind of try and emulate what this will look like with some wear on it. And then, you know, for the rest of this video, we're just going to forget this side. I found that just running around trying to get, you know, here, there, everywhere and get this video out, it was going to be a little bit sporadic uh, or it was going to be a little bit spastic. So I'm just going to concentrate on this panel right here and patina matching it. The blue that I'm going to use doesn't represent the sort of darkest blue. So this blue, um, it is a little bit lighter. But I think when I layer it on and sand it back, it's going to give some some wear and some tear looking, you know, some sun impact on the areas of the blue that were never actually painted over this lighter blue color. Um, so I think it should work out pretty well. And I do have a blue that matches this a lot better. And we're going to get to that in later videos. So this is going to be a quick night because I do want to get paint on here and then let it dry. If you don't let the paint dry enough between layers and go to sand it, you just end up with like these weird like balls of paint and it creates a really weird effect could work in some instances it's not going to work for me here and it's just going to frustrate me and waste material so i'm going to hit this with the dark blue tonight give it a good time to dry i actually play hockey tomorrow night so it's going to dry for a while and then i'm going to come back uh today is tuesday uh, i'm going to come back thursday with either another dark blue probably another dark blue and then i'll come back friday with the light blue layers so we can start layering the same i kind of mentioned all going to be dark blue dark blue, light blue kind of into here and across here and down. If you were painting this on the back of the truck, you wouldn't hit down here with light blue because you'd be too lazy to remove the bed. So I'm gonna try my best to mimic that uh, and we'll see what happens. I've done my first pass and I've turned my really bright lights on so you guys can see what I'm working with. So the blue is obviously pretty light and going over the white that was previously on here, the cream color that was really on here, created an interesting effect. Um, I am going to have to layer the blue on a little bit more to bring out some more of that blue color. But you can really see how going over the red oxide primer at the bottom, some of the white spots, it's, it's really kind of created a unique look 
like some rust is coming through uh, and that is definitely what I want to happen um, so tonight I'm probably gonna put one more coat over this just to give it a little bit more uh, a little bit more color uh, and then I'll come over it with another darker blue uh, the next day I'm out and then we'll see how that works and then like I said we'll hit the edges with the with the light blue uh, and we'll see what we're looking at holding this panel up which is again from my quarter panel you can see that it doesn't really match like this the color that I'm using right now is supposed to represent the darkest of the blues on this and while it's close here it's not quite there yet but funny enough it's actually a little bit closer to this blue which isn't something that I expected um, so I think if I just keep layering on these blues and then knock it back a little bit we're gonna end up with something that that matches the look and I'm actually uh, I kind of regret how far I went on these on these panels because there's a lot of cool patina in here that I think I can start to bring out and hopefully uh, I can figure out a way to mimic it on some of this maybe I throw a little bit of white in uh, or a cream color underneath over sorry I throw a little bit of cream over the primer to give it uh, sort of a unique look but who knows uh, I'm gonna keep playing with here see where we end up how this ends up looking uh, I'm pretty happy with sort of what it's looking like so far I think it's gonna be um, you know pretty convincing that this truck uh, did see a little bit of abuse and color and all that jazz uh, all uh, abuse and Sun so uh, I'm gonna give this a few more minutes I am going to hit it with another coat of paint uh, and then we will be back later this week uh, hopefully when this is drying nothing funky happens I don't get any uh, paint peeling up because that's a little bit funky to deal with um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what this looks like in a couple of days so uh, we'll be back then when this is all dry and we're ready to lay on another coat of paint all right so it's uh, two days from the last time I sprayed some paint and we are back in patina central where we are going to continue to try and match this back panel to something like what's going on over there so I've got some pretty good stuff going on here uh, the blue was a little bit transparent, you know, it's supposed to go over a primer, so you're supposed to build it up. So it's obviously a lot, it's got some light spots, but it's actually pretty cool. You can see some of the oxide primer coming through, kind of looking like some rust. That is definitely going to change a little bit once we put down some more coats of blue. Um, but, you know, you got some nice stuff going over here, um, which is where there was some rust naturally. So that's going to look really convincing, even though it's in a spot where you're not going to see it. Once again, I'm practicing in this area because if I really mess it up, it's not really going to matter too much because no one's really going to see it. But if I do get some stuff that does work, I know how to use it, uh, especially for the tailgate. The tailgate's going to be really important, and sort of the tops of uh, sorry, the tops of the bed rails there. That's going to be really important to kind of mimic this. I am going to sand this down to get some of that uh, primer overspray off of it, so that I can get back to the brown that was on here and hopefully build up some patina. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a tack cloth to it again and then I'm going to spray two more blues, a light one and a dark one. The dark one is going to kind of go in the center here. The light is going to go on the top because my truck is a lighter blue. So uh, same as every other day, we are going to camera, tripod and uh, spray a bit more. Uh, I've got some really nice stuff going on down here that's pretty cool. Um, and the paint does stick pretty well considering there was not a lot of prep work done down there at all. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Alright, so I just sprayed some paint and I'm going to keep this update pretty short because I took my mask off so I could talk to you guys but there's still a lot of fumes kicking around here and I don't want to lose too many brain cells. Sprayed two other colors of blue. As you can see from down there to up there, those blues don't really match. This dark one here is a lot closer, uh, the light one is not, but that's okay because my next step is actually going to be going over it with a darker blue that matches closer to that. I'm going to go over this whole back panel again in splotchy areas. And then I'm going to come back in the last day with uh, with this darker blue here. But what I want to try and do is like this is a little bit darker than here and that's a little bit darker than there. So if I have these different colors of blue on here and I start sanding it back, we're going to start seeing a lot of that different color start to come out. And that's why I'm putting on a lot of paint 
So that can knock things back without going back to the brown or the gray primer or anything like that. You can see that I did kind of take away a lot of that red oxide primer that was starting to bleed through. When I start sanding it through and rubbing it down, that's going to start to come back. And we're going to start to get back some of that uh, patina and brown and rusting. But I really want to make sure that I have enough paint on here so that I don't blow through anything. Because with 1K spray paint, it's really, really easy to blow through. So I just want to make sure that I have enough paint down so that we can test out a few techniques. I definitely want to get you know some scratches in there. I'm going to start try using some wire brush and stuff like that. And I don't want to blow all the way down to the last layer because then uh, I'll either have to decide to leave it or build it back up. So uh, I've gone through my spray pattern has been, you know, the dude on the farm who just wanted to change the color of his truck. It was originally this color and he's trying to get to a lighter blue. But if the bed's on the truck, he probably just pushed it back and reached where he could with the spray can or with the brush or whatever he used. So that's why I'm really not going in here with the light blue, but I'm going out on the outside with, with the lighter blue and on the other side. So um, we're going to let this dry again um, and then we're going to come back for day three or four uh, with another dark blue. And then finally we are going to hit it with um, the, the blue that is closer matched to this so we can get a nice coat on there and then definitely start uh, knocking it down and uh, see where we end up. Okay, so we're back again and it's finally time to sand. Everything has had a lot of chance to dry and it should sand pretty well without piling up and causing any issues. So, <clears throat> if we look at what we've done here, uh, I've got a couple different layers of blue. Remember, we're just focusing on this panel. Don't worry about that overspray. It'll just get blended in later. Um, I did end up going over with a few layers. Uh, I put some down the middle just because I wanted some randomness. Uh, you can see there's some red oxide poking through there. Uh, I just kind of sprayed paint to get enough so that when I go do go down and sand it, uh, it'll look kind of natural and like, you know, someone, like I said, someone's trying to paint this, they just kind of shoved the bed backwards, kind of did what they could and then pushed it forward. You're gonna see where, uh, where they didn't kind of reach everything. And then, you know, there's lots of texture in the paint. Um, again, I didn't spend too much time prepping this panel or worry about sanding between coats because again, it's gonna be patina. Uh, but I think there is enough material on here now to kind of uh, work this in. I'm probably gonna start at about 800 grit and see how that's knocking it down. And then I can go uh, harsher if I need to, but it's way harder to go too harsh to start and then try and walk it back that way. Uh, so I'm gonna start at the bottom, try and get some of the red oxide to come out so it looks like it's rusting um, a little bit down there, a little bit up there, just see what I can create. Um, and usually when I do that, I just wrap um, a little bit of sandpaper around that sponge there. I'm gonna go with uh, with some water, um, but you know you'll see all that when I put the camera on the tripod, and uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing.
All right, so we've made some pretty good progress on patinating the back of this uh, bed here. Um, so I've gone through and you can see where there's some water and stuff. I do have to clean this up. I'm probably going to keep going up in grits just to get it uh, a little bit clearer because there's some colors that are a little bit muddy. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous to kind of go to finer sandpaper, but I, I've done this before when I was matching the patina on my cab. If I get it, I work my way up and then kind of give it a light buff. It sort of helps out with the consistency. Um, especially areas down here where I sand it a little bit harder in some spots to try and bring some of the rust and stuff out. Uh, but you know, it's gone pretty good. I did definitely blow through on a couple of spots. So I will probably, because of where this is, just leave it and let it actually rust. Um, but you know, I'm pretty happy with this as sort of a test piece for how I wanted to patina the rest of the bed. Uh, I am going to go through and do up here. Uh, I'll move the camera for that because I want to try out a few things to uh, simulate some scratches because you are definitely going to see uh, this part here. So I definitely want to put a little bit more work into that. But overall, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about patining down there. No one's going to see that and that's covered and it, it's solid. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to just um, do a little bit more sanding here. I'll do this kind of off camera, clean it up and then come back uh, later sort of at the end of the video and we'll see how this works out. Um, but let's work on uh, this top side here. For this top side being the back of the bed, I really think that, you know, there would be you know, some decent burn through here, maybe a little bit at the top and then more in the corners. And then uh, the damage work to be up in here, I'm probably gonna wait until I do this so that I can kind of do it all at the same time. But let's definitely try and wear this down a little bit so it doesn't look quite as pristine and nice as it does. Uh, and then we'll be able to sort of call this video a wrap. Overall, I'm pretty stoked on how this worked out. And you know, uh, I said at the beginning, this was gonna be a test for my method. So this method seems to be working pretty well, which means that I can then transfer it to uh, the rest of the bed. Now, painting the rest of the bed with rattle cans is not going to be cost effective. So I'm definitely thinking of a, a different option to do that. But for now, I know that, like I said, my method is sound. Uh, I can definitely apply this over and over and over to the other parts of the bed. So um, yeah, let's get after it and see what we can do to this top panel. All right, so good news. I am done for this video with my patina experiments. Uh, I put down the paint, I sanded it down. I think I've established a pretty good working method for dealing with the rest of my bed. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at what I did. Okay, so uh, first things first, this back bed rail, I think really looks convincing for the back bed rail of a truck that was used. Uh, the brown base here with the two different blues sanding it all down. I went more aggressive on this one. Uh, just, I want to knock down a lot of that blue because if you think about it, that panel is gonna get all beat up and this is gonna get all beat up too uh, from a truck that's gonna be used. So if that was nice bright blue, it just wouldn't really uh, look super realistic. Uh, so I knocked that all down, it came through really good. Um, I think when I do these sides, I might, uh, just because that's gonna be the back, it's gonna get a lot of abuse and the top of the tailgate's gonna get a lot of abuse too. But I think these areas would have a little bit more of the dark blue. So I might not sand down as aggressively. Um, but if I did, I think that looks really uh, realistic and quite nice. Um, I didn't burn through in too many spots. I did burn through right here, but if you look at it, there's a big dent there. So there's a good chance that if you did that, that paint would flake off anyway, and that would happen. So once that starts rusting up a little bit, it's going to look pretty nice. Uh, the rest of it is, you know, it's, it's pretty decent. I'm very uh, excited on how that looked. 
And then sort of the, the, the panel of the hour, I guess, is this back one, which I was testing a lot of different techniques out. Uh, let me adjust my light a little bit so you can see a bit better. So, uh, things that worked really well. Uh, I think that, you know, rust started, rust started to come out in certain spots. Obviously, I burned through there in some of the dents right there, a couple spots. So it's not perfect, um, but I think it definitely kind of shows the technique that I need. I do like how, you know, you can see little bits of red coming through here. There's a spot there, there's a spot there. That's where it rusted out normally. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, the two dark blues that I used, it didn't really create the effect that I wanted to because I did burn through one and get to the other one, which is just a little bit more matte. Um, so it does look a little bit funky, but I'm not crazy worried about it. Like I said, this was just a test. Honestly, I consumed enough material on this that I'm not going to go over it. Um, but, you know, from what it looked like before, I'll splice in a before clip just to remind you. Uh, I think it's, it's quite convincing that, you know, I didn't go in here and muck around and clean up anything. And this could look like something that someone did paint a while ago. They did, you know, put some care into it. Uh, and then it just wore down over time. So like I said, I'm really, really stoked on how this looks. And hopefully, you know, watching this video and seeing the progress, uh, you guys are, are, are right on there, right on board with me in how much better this looks than it did uh, before the start of the video. So uh, we're gonna call this video a wrap. So I uh, did manage to get the inside of this coated, which means I knocked another thing off that list. So uh, my battery is running low, so I'm gonna cut this really short. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I know it was a bit of a long one, a lot of a process, and it's a little bit late. Um, but thanks again for watching. If you do like it, give me a like, a share, a subscribe, a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. And uh, I'm super stoked to keep rolling on this truck. And we will catch you in the next video.